My guest today is Annalise Warren. Annalise is a CEO, business strategist, marketing mentor, speaker, and a mother of three. Annalise found herself getting asked for business and marketing advice from women who wanted more freedom in business and in life and didn't know how to translate that into a viable business model and take it to the world. So she was determined to provide a way for small business owners to get affordable access to expert entrepreneurs. Uh, marketers, I should say. So she founded the Marketing Mentor Program in 2019. Annalise has a unique spectrum of experience that informs and filters through her work with her clients. She supports women to transform their business and discover the profit and freedom they started it in order to achieve. And her true passion really lies, though, in developing and implementing efficient, effective, high converting messages and strategies that move the needle she is in Australia, and I'm welcoming to the show now, Annalise Warren. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Brandon. Absolutely. Well, as I said, you're where are you, Melbourne? Yeah, on the coast of Melbourne, so right at the start of the Great Ocean Road. Outstanding. My wife went there last year about this time, and she didn't want to come back. <laughs> she reluctantly returned to the States, uh, but she she keeps saying that this week. You know, last week at this time... I was in, uh, you know, Melbourne or Sydney or wherever. So she had a, she had an amazing yeah. trip, but, uh, thank you so much for getting up early on, on your time to talk for the podcast <laughs> today. You're and, so welcome. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to know, first of all, Annalise, if you could just sort of step back in time and tell us about your business and how you actually got started doing what you're doing. Sure. So about three and a half years ago, um, we were living in Melbourne, actually, and I was working for and um, managing an, a training organization. And we we knew we wanted to move back down the coast. So it's about two hours. And I asked for more flexi time from home, but that wasn't allowed. Um, so, so I quit because I like, you know, like you've mentioned, I've got little kids and I didn't want to leave before they were <laughs> awake and be home when they were asleep. Um, you know, five days a week, that's not what I wanted. So we, we decided to start a marketing agency. My husband was obviously my background is marketing. Um, my husband was a carpenter, actually, so like a general contractor kind of thing. Okay. So we have an agency that works with home builders and trades um, so that we still are running that. But that started the process of that commencing that started, yeah, three and a half years ago. And then once we were actually doing it and profitable, we were working from home around the kids. That's when I started connecting mostly with other mums at that time who wanted the same thing, who didn't want to have their kids in daycare for a job that they didn't like doing. Um, and so, but the business models that they wanted to, to develop was never going to be viable for them to hire a marketing agency or even a really good freelancer. So I started mentoring them how to do it themselves in on Zoom, you know, just a group have getting in the back end of their ad accounts and showing them how to set things up. And that has now evolved to be the marketing mentor program. So now it's not just mums, it's small business owners of all sorts and shapes and sizes. And um, we still have the agency and it's, it's fun. It's great. So, that sounds good. So you do some men, a lot of mentoring, it sounds like where you show people how to do it and then they implement and you also do it all for some clients as well. Correct. Yeah, the agency is still home builders and trades. Um, of course, if you know someone else wants a website, one of our other clients wants a website or something, then yes, we will build. It. <laughs> we can build it for them. But um, but the beauty of it is that they get access to the agency team, so they get to speak to the Google Ads expert every week and a branding expert every week and a copywriter and you know all of that. But they they are doing it themselves or someone on their team is doing it. So, um, yeah, I love, I love the balance and mostly now I'm in the mentor side. I love the pitch on your website too, where you basically say you have two choices. You can go on Google and look at 400 different articles and hundreds of videos and figure it out yourself, or you can hire us and we'll just tell you how to do it. So, um, that makes sense yeah. to most people, I would think. So that's great. 
I think. And it's true, you know, even on the calls, sometimes we'll have clients like, oh, you know, I I tried to work this out for 45 minutes and they come on the call and it's done in five minutes. Like, oh, that button, that button, that button, and and we're done. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it, it, the model works really, really well. It's, it is true. I mean, everything is on the internet. You can find it all, right? If you want to look hard enough and spend enough time, but people are running their own businesses. Like you said, if you're a carpenter or you're running a restaurant or something else, you don't really have time to figure out how to use Zapier or even to uh, figure out the nuances of the newest thing, TikTok or whatever. You need a marketing person who spends their time and geeks out on figuring all this stuff out so that you can give them the shortcuts. So I love that Mm -hmm. about what you're doing for people. Things. And so, <laughs> yeah, it's so I also dis- discovered that you wear a lot of different hats and you serve clients on different fronts. And there's two topics in particular I want to ask you about that you're very passionate about. One is personal branding and the other is relationship marketing. So I'd love mm-hmm. to explore if you'd like the, ex- the sort of connections between those two areas, starting with personal branding. How do you define that and what makes that important? Yeah, your personal branding is about you being the centerpiece of your business and it's about your personality and what you stand for because we all know now, you know, especially right now, everyone is flocking online and there is zero barrier to entry if you want to start an online business, if you're a service-based business owner, you can have a, a business up and running in 30 minutes. <laughs> How long does it take to take right. a photo and start a Facebook page and run an ad to, you know, a workshop or something? So the, the barrier to entry is really, really low. That means that there's a lot of people doing what you do online. There's a lot of graphic designers and there's a lot of, you know, accountants and and legal people and marketers, like <laughs> more than we could probably ever count. And so your personal brand is you. You're the only thing that can't be duplicated. So what is it that you stand for? What is it? Why did you start your business? How are you doing things differently? And how are you bringing that? How are you helping your clients in a way that is that is unique? So personal branding is all about that. And I believe that as um, as competition grows and as, as the marketplace gets even more crowded, that our values and who we are is going to be the thing that differentiates us. I completely concur and agree with you. I mean, my name is Brandon, and uh, it, it only dawned on me in the last couple of years that brand on – is really cool when you separate them. So that is my personal brand now is brand on, which is fun. Uh, but you know, a lot of people though, unlike perhaps yourself and myself, um, and even to this day, I still have some times when I feel, um, you know, the, what they call the imposter syndrome, uh, or other people I've spoken to are either scared or skeptical or cynical about personal branding. Those seem to be the three major barriers to that. What do you say to people who are skeptical or, or, or fr- frightened and think, you know, no one cares what I have to say. I don't, I'm shy on camera. I don't like to talk. I don't know what to tweet. What do you say to those people, Annalise, who need to kind of come out of their shell, if you will, and stand for that brand that they have created? Yeah. Well, if you are thinking of personal brand as that you need to share photos of your kids and what you're wearing that day and what you had for breakfast, then like, yeah, sorry, nobody really cares unless you've got a really big audience. Right. People don't, people don't care. So that, yes. But if you started your business because you saw a need in a, in a population group and you are actually legitimately helping people move from A to B or move their business from A to B, then you have something to offer and there's only one person in your field that is at the top. So it's pretty unlikely that it's you. So there is always going to be someone who is above you, who has more knowledge, more education, more clients, more, you know, fill in the blank. But there are also, it's unlikely that you're at the bottom as well. <laughs> you so there's right. always going to be, there's always going to be people behind you. 
there's always going to be people that are a couple of steps behind that you can really serve. And so go back to that heart of service and stop making it about you. And I know that sounds really blunt, but for me, I used to hate public speaking. Like I would get on the stage and I would literally, my body would shake and I'd tell myself it's fine. It's fine. But my voice would come out like (laughs) wavering. (laughs) It just wouldn't cooperate. Like I had this physical reaction to, to people looking at me, even on my wedding day, I was like, Oh no, everyone's going (laughs) to stare at me. No, not on your wedding day. Of course not. And so, (laughs) so, so I, I get it. Like I, I was there And for me, I had to stop looking at me and thinking about what they were going to think about me as a person and go, no, my self-worth actually comes from not what I do as a business and turn to, well, I can actually really help people and people really need to hear this message. And so that's what I'm going to focus on. So, and just allow yourself to, to suck a little bit, to be bad because (laughs) it's, to do, yeah. No, no question. To take the photos, to take the photos, to start a podcast, to be on live video or even recorded video, you're not going to be good at the start. You just like, I I haven't met someone who's just popped out of the womb and is fantastic at speaking in front of people. Oh, absolutely. So it's just... It's just practice and allow yourself to, to, you know, um, one of my mentors is Callie Roach and she says, train for your business like an athlete chain, trains for your sport. And it's so true. You need to just run the drills and practice and practice and you will get better. If you look back, so if you look back at some of my earlier videos, which I think I started on video regularly like a year and a half ago, they're going to be ter- like. <laughs> pretty pretty bad (laughs) and I'm still not where I would love to be in terms of articulation and you know all all of that I I can definitely do better but I'm you get better you just you just get better and in terms of being skeptical well if you have another way that you think that you can stand out and you have another way that you can get that emotional connection with people then then do that but clearly there's something to this because so many people are working on their personal brand and then you have we buy from people people buy from people we we're human beings we like connecting we um yeah it's just something different having a we have a relationship with a person we don't have a relationship with a business or or a brand so um, like think about the, your favorite restaurant or your favorite cafe. There's probably someone there that makes you smile when you go there. So, you know, if, if you really don't want to do personal branding, then you need to think of some other way to get that emotional connection. I love everything you said, um, going to that core of what you started the business for and why you're there to serve. I think, uh, Russell Brunson, who started click funnels, you know, talks about this a lot. Um, that suck factor is that you, you mentioned that too, doing something like this, a podcast that you and I are doing, we're kind of doing this live, you know, it obviously is going to be recorded, but I kind of felt like I flubbed the intro, but I kept going because what are you going to do? Stop and do it over and over. You just have to keep, keep putting in the reps. Like you said, it's like exercise and you, you will get better. Um, you will, you'll get over the fear of being on camera or whatever. But if, as long as you're serving, which is what we're doing right now, anybody who's listening to this should be getting a lot of value out of what you've said, because it's, you know, it's powerful because you're saying, give yourself permission to fail and keep going. Uh, You know, a kid doesn't learn to walk the first time they get up, they fall right back on their face. You know that you have three, right? They're probably falling all over the place and we better hurry up because they're still asleep. So we don't (laughs) want to wake them up, but you know, that'd be fine. Yeah. Think about yourself. Yeah. Being a child, just be childlike. And as you said, people buy from other people. They don't buy the, you know, the product or the company per se. They buy the people that make the products and stand behind the company and services. So you know, we are attracted to those personalities, obviously, but even the quirky people, the people that, you know, stumble over their words, they don't look like a model, 
they're just funny, quirky people, right? Oftentimes we're attracted to those just as much because they're real. So that's a lot of what I think about personal branding too, is just be real, be yourself. Yeah. You're no. making me laugh because, um, <laughs> so I, I do a, like a five day live workshop now, um, as the sales kind of component to move people into the marketing mentor program. And the things that have happened in those videos, cause they go for about an hour, an hour and a half and it's a whole week. So I've had, you know, dogs coming in and like tripods falling over, <laughs> spilling things on myself. So, so yes, it's, um, it, it's fine to have all of those rough edges because it's it's real life and it makes you relatable and it people can can connect with with that. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a reason why we laugh at bloopers, which we call I don't I don't know if you call them the same in Australia mm -hmm. bloopers. You know the yeah. when people, especially on TV or whatever, they mess up, and they fall over or what have you. It's just hysterical. So you know they even put the blooper reels in because they want you to see that they're not exactly perfect all the time. Well, let's talk about the other big topic of relationship marketing. Is there a correlation between the two? What exactly is relationship marketing as you define it? Yeah. So relationship marketing, it's one of those really funny terms because it's marketing, it's communication. It should all be sort of based on relationships, but I think we, we call it relationship marketing now because it's, just to sort of differentiate it because for a long time we really went to automation and everything was how can I be really hands off in my business and how can I not um, you know not have to talk to people and just have emails and and all of that but more and more again so yes it is connected to personal brand because you're building a relationship and my clients who really use this in a really powerful way are normally the smaller businesses um, who, who are potentially not even spending money on ads, who want to get their message out there and they, uh, they're doing it by going, getting inside their DMs and actually talking to their people. So there's, there's a few sides to this. If you have a, um, a local, a local business where you, you know, brick and mortar or you're in a local area and you're actually dealing with the people who are physically around you, well, then you can go and have coffee with people. And you know that I think I skipped a bit. So I think maybe what we need to actually establish first is that business is going to be always around relationships. And we are dealing with people. It's not just a number or a credit card or you know, something like that. You're dealing with people and you want to really invest in that long-term relationship because that is going to be the thing that keeps your business sustainable is to keep your people there and to be in it for the, for the long, the long term. And so, yes, you can do that face to face by going and, you know, taking people out for coffee. We work with home builders and trades and, they are building relationships with people like architects who can feed them clients. Mm -hmm. So they, there's that component. So, you know, sort of sidewards sort of relationship building. And then how are you building a relationship with your, with your customer from the very start, from the very start of the buying funnel, when they first become aware of you, how are you making it all about them? How are you connecting with them? How are you actually bringing them into your business family and giving them things and talking with them before you even try and sell them something? Right. So that's what that's what we're sort of talking about here. Well, I, th I think, and you're correct to mention that it usually works best when you're small because you can do more outreach. And in the early days, especially for folks like us, you're probably just doing everything. You're wearing all the hats, you're, you know, you're doing the work, you're calling the clients, you're collecting on the, the invoices and everything. And there's a lot more interaction, but as a company grows and scales there, therein lies a huge problem. Companies start to lose that direct connection. And as you said, Annalise, they start to think, oh, we need to be more efficient. We just need to be doing more email blasts and all kinds of ads and stuff like that. And just, you know, we don't need to talk to them anymore. But I think companies always have to come back to, even if it's just, um, you know, a few, one out of a hundred, 
making those phone calls and dropping, you know, surprises in the, in the mail or whatever to surprise and delight their customers showing up, knocking on doors. Hey, you know, I was just in the neighborhood and thought I would bring a box of donuts or whatever, you know, people forget, Mm -hmm. of course, now in COVID, we're going to have to get rid of a lot of that, unfortunately. Right. But when hopefully when things get back to normal, one of these days, we should remember that relationships are built on those interactions and not on email blast. Yeah, exactly. And I think we should always be, we should, you're totally right. We should always be speaking to our customers because otherwise like our business doesn't exist without them. And if we are creating things that we want, then that's, great but who's going to buy it we need to be we need to be actually talking to them and finding out even things as simple as what content do you want what are you struggling with what do you you know you need to have that that finger on the pulse you need to be speaking to them and have someone dedicated in your in your team that does that so for example now we we have always connected with people on on Instagram so whenever people follow us we start we start a conversation with them so that we know where they're at, how we can help them. And I'm not getting in there going like, this is how I can help you. It's, you know, what are you, (laughs) where are you at in your business? What are you doing? Why did you come here? How can I, how can we serve you? And now my, you know, someone in our team does that initially, but then whoever responds, then generally it's still me. It's, I'm um, definitely in the mentor program and on my, you know, Annalise dot on the Instagram one. That's definitely me. My assistant would will, will send out the first message because not everyone's going to reply. Maybe ten percent of people are going to reply, mm-hmm. and then and then I pick it up from there. And it and so you can find ways like that to still be really high touch, and but do it in a way that that works for you. That's great. I, um, I agree that you, you know, you just have to look for different opportunities. I like a couple of tools. One's called Bonjoro and another one's called Dub, D-U-B-B. Um, and both of those allow you to quickly send a video message to somebody. And it's amazing that you can do it so fast just using your smartphone. And people don't maybe necessarily think about that. But, you know, instead of just popping off an, an email Uh, generic that they might read and think, "Hmm, I don't even know if Annalise actually sent me this, but if they see your photo in there with maybe a little gift of you smiling and waving, and then they Mm -hmm. click it and it's you saying, hi, Brandon, it's Annalise. I was just checking in. (laughs) You're like, wow, you know, the owner took time to do that. So these tools are available and cheap and readily, um, you know, uh, usable. So I encourage people to think outside the box a little bit and, and not just, uh, you know, use technology as a crutch, but use it as more of an enabler to keep those relationships going when you can't be in the same room with somebody. So good. Yeah. And voice messages. Yeah. I love that. And and like you were saying on Instagram, you know, you can pop in and leave somebody a a video or voice message as well. You can do it on LinkedIn and other platforms. Um, Mm -hmm. Another platform that, you know, you and I are probably using constantly for clients is Facebook. And one of the things I saw you wrote was, you advise clients to not boost their post. Uh, can, you t- can you explain why? And I, I agree with that, but I want you to explain why boosting posts is not exactly the greatest way to use Facebook ads. Sure. People like <laughs> either get angry at me for this or they like slide down in their seats and cover their I faces. I do it. I, I do it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so boosting your post is going to it's a really quick way of getting more people to see that post but it gives you really limited control around who sees it where they see it how often they see it and all of that and if you're just boosting a post then it's probably not a part of a bigger campaign and it's probably not really well thought out in terms of how does this fit into the buyer journey? How does this help move this person closer towards me? How does this serve them? And so it's probably not a really great idea. There's there's two times when I say that I think maybe boosting your post could be okay, which is for people like um, like my 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 tradies 
for example. So if you're building fences and you work in a really specific geographical location and you work with a very specific group of people, um, even, even fencing, like it's probably not specific enough, but anyway, then you can boost your post because you're only going to be picking that one town and you're only going to be picking a specific group of people. Probably a better example is um, I'm actually qualified as a, as a personal trainer, a fitness trainer. Um, I've done it for a decade on the okay. side, not, not for about a year and a half, but I love it. And so I would always be doing what I was doing and I would run a mums and bubs fitness class at the same time, um, you know, just once or twice a week. And for me, I could boost that post because I'm only going to be working with in a one location because it's a physical class and it's only for women who are, you know, in a certain age range who are going to be bringing their babies. So for in that scenario, boosting your post, it's going to be okay because it doesn't matter where they see it. You're so, so targeted that it's unlikely you're going to waste your money. Mm-hmm. The other time I think it would be okay to boost your post is on Facebook. If you have, you know, 2000 people who are following your page, your business page, then very few of those are going to be seeing your organic organic content. So if you're going to be running an event or a workshop or something, you know, you just released a podcast episode and you want more of your own followers to see that, then you could consider boosting your post to your own people because it is very much sort of pay to play now. Thanks, Facebook. Yeah. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And so then in that scenario, if you're just boosting it to make sure your own people are seeing it, then great. That's fine. I think that's okay. It's, you could use boost. Um, but outside of those two scenarios, there is a better way to do it within Ads Manager. That's to hire you as a mentor because once you get past the easy button of boost posts, it gets a little crazy and complicated once you go into Facebook Ads Manager and with all the changes, right? So that's yeah. when typically the small business owner needs to stop futzing around with that and get a mentor like like you, Annalise, and say, look, show me how to do this. Cut to the chase because there's just a lot going on here. So, um, but you, as you said, then the world of targeting opens up big time, and you can do so much more with every dollar you spend. So it's much more yeah. cost effective and and a better benefit long term. So I love your explanation for all that. Um, in addition to that, when when people are running ads, is there any other data that you you know advise your clients to pay attention to? Um, yeah, so a lot of, I'm a big advocate for testing images at the very least, obviously inside the agency, um, and, you know, even in the mentor program, we can do a whole heap of testing, but if you're just getting started and you can get a campaign up and running and you can, you know, create, create your audience, then, and it's really, I'm really hesitant to, to get into too much nitty gritty. Oh, but no generally, you don't, have, don't have, you don't have to get into too many weeds here, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you can test a few different images because for the, from the same budget, so I'm not saying pay, you know, three times the amount. I'm just saying pop three different images there that are pretty different because you never know what is going to what is going to resonate with people. And even to this day, so I've been running ads now for probably three years mm. and I still, like, and I'm really good at it. Like, <laughs> not to, you know, do my own too much, but like I can, I'm, I'm very good at, at Facebook ads. I can get really great results and I still cannot pick the right, the winning image every single time, but every single time, most times the image that, gets the best results is not the one that I would have picked. I know I'm the same. I'm like, do I pick the stock image of the smiling woman next to the computer or the puppy or a real person or this or that? And sometimes the, the ugly image gets better results. And you're like, I can't, I don't understand why, you know, and maybe it's just the day and you know the time that you put it out there, but it's, it's the same reason why people say, how can I make something go viral? You're like, you can't. You know, you just, there's no mm-hmm. science. Well, there may be some science, but it's going to be very difficult to just make an ad be super successful immediately or mm-hmm. something to go viral. Uh, but, you know, there, as you said, takes a lot of testing. 
And, and that takes, again, also a strategy behind it so that you're not just yeah. throwing money all over the place just to see what happens. You're being very methodical about it. Well, yeah. any other advice um, before I ask you to tell us where we can learn more about you and your services? Yeah, I, I will really reiterate that, that marketing is about testing. And it's, yes, marketers know the tools and the quickest way to read the data so that we can not waste money and we can pivot and we know what direction to go and we know how to troubleshoot and we know how to use the tech. And, you know, if you're creative, you've got some really great ideas, but it's still it's still potentially a new idea and a new, or a new offer that you're taking to a, a market and you, there's always no, no marketer can ever guarantee you results because marketing is all about testing. It's about, you know, moving forward and going, okay, that worked, that didn't, now we're moving this way, that worked, that didn't. And you optimize and refine over time. And so don't get disheartened if the first thing that, you know, if some of the things that you're doing or even most of the things that you're doing initially aren't totally accurate. So do speak to your market. Do not just create this wonderful business, you know, idea or campaign in your head without getting feedback from people and then be looking at the data, create something that is what people want because often what our audience want isn't what they need and we know what they need, but we need to market what they want and then give them what they want and what they need. <laughs> so, I love that. So don't be too... Don't be too attached to the results. In marketing, you really can't be. It's just about taking something to market. And initially, you're buying data. You're buying. That's what you're doing. You need to be willing to invest the time and probably the money, depending on, you know, what you're doing, to to buy that data and refine and optimize. It's really unlikely that you're going to have a winning campaign or a winning, winning business model out of the gate. So don't get discouraged with that, but just separate yourself a bit, look at the data and act on the data and, and make it fun. That is all great advice. And I like what you said, basically beware of false profits too, because there are a lot of companies out there will make you all kinds of glowing promises. Like, yeah, you just give us X amount of money and we'll get you on page one of Google. Like immediately, like, yeah, Google controls Google. Unless you work there, I'm not going to be confident that you're going to be able to pull that off. Now, yes, if I give you a million dollars, you could probably get my ad on Google. Maybe. Depends on what my niche is. But, uh, you know, regardless, be very aware, like Annalise is saying, that marketing is a test. It is a series of iterations. And right out of the gate, you should not expect 100% flawless results. You're going to be collecting data, getting feedback and adjusting as you go along. But good marketers know how to set those tests up and know what data to look for to help guide mm. you qu as quickly as possible. So you're not just floundering yourself. And that's, again, why you need a mentor. So with that in mind, Annalise, where can people go to find out more about your mentor services and your agency services? Sure. So the agency is custombuildmarketing.com. But like I said, it's home builders and trades. Okay. Um, the... The mentor program is at AnnaliseWarn.com and it's forward slash marketing mentor. But if you want to come and hang out and talk and get, um, I've got, I'm, I'm live once a week inside my Facebook group, the social marketing method. So hop on over in there and, um, yes, it will really be me <laughs> talking <laughs> And um, yeah, it, it's good fun. It's good fun in there. Excellent. So your website is Annalise Warren, A-N-N-E-L-I-S-E-W-O-R-N.com. Annalise Warren. And also you have a podcast. What it, Tell the listeners what your podcast is and where they can find that as well. I do. And actually it's getting announced next week. So I've got the, the mum style business podcast, the mum style, right? Okay. Mum style. And it's M U M. <laughs> yeah. Um, Here we call them moms, but I love, you love the accent. Yeah. And I love how you say moms. <laughs> so moms here, yes. are, moms here are pretty flowers. <laughs> in, in are the they United really? States. Yeah. We, oh, yes. I've never knew that. Yeah. That's what, that's what we call moms here. They're, they're like, so, you know, Oh, you how say, is it that I've been interacting with the US <laughs> so long and no one's ever yeah. told me that? <laughs> they probably are too embarrassed to say Thanks that. Thanks for educating me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so I've got the mum style business podcast, but actually because everything else that I do is now not just to mums and really the people that I work with, the common thread is that it's people who are, uh, are really people focused, earth conscious. And so the mum style business will, is going to seasonal and then next year we'll be starting impact business, which oh, is wow. about for people who really want to make a difference in or through their business or their business funds, you know, making, making a bigger impact in the world and making a difference. So right. stay tuned. So mum style business will still be there, but it'll be seasonal and impact business will be where I'm at. All right. Well, good luck with that. And thank you so much Thanks. for again, being on the podcast and sharing a lot of great advice with people who um, maybe don't necessarily know enough or haven't, you know, participated enough to get good at either personal branding, relationship marketing, marketing in general, and the reasons why they should reach out to a mentor or a marketing professional like yourself to sort of spur on their growth. So again, thank you so much, Annalise. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a wonderful start to the morning. (laughs) 